Welcome to the all new That Business Show 2.0 with your host, Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Each and every weekday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we talk with different business professionals and entrepreneurs, and we'd like to hear your story too. Simply visit tbsinterview.com for more information. My guest today is Abby Golhar. He is the host of the Real Estate Deal Talk uh, radio show and podcast, and he's also a, an accomplished real estate investor based out of Atlanta, Georgia. So, Abby, welcome to the program today. Hey, thanks for having me, Jamie. Appreciate it. So first off, tell me a little bit about your background and how you got into real estate. Yeah, great question. I started in Michigan. I was an engineering student at at the University of Michigan. And, you know, I had this, I failed that first semester. You know, you, you, you come off of high school and you're like, oh, I got this. Right. You know, like, I totally got this. I'm going to dominate my first semester. I was that kid that thought he could dominate totally humbled, had no idea what I was doing, <laughs> failed my first semester in classes. You know, I think I was part of the square root club. Have you heard of the square root club? No, what's that? It's, it's where the square root of your GPA is actually higher than your GPA. <laughs> you know, I had that it's, same mentality. I came out of high school, a perfect student, <laughs> AB student, went into college, and I went to chemistry and biology studies, and I did good my first semester. I, sh I was that kid who would only show up on test days, but the next uh, three semesters were straight downhill, and it led to me dropping out. But I returned to college in my mid-20s, but I think you and I kind of share that same bug. Yeah, so I, I finished I finished college, but during the during my time, I'm like, you know, there has to be something more to life than, you know, graduating and then working for like a big tech company. Like that's just that's just not my style. That's not my thing. And I was as I was developing my personality, I started to develop this sense of like, oh my gosh, like I love investing. I love real estate. I read all the books. I'm also that kid that went to business school classes that got kicked out because I wasn't paying for them. <laughs> right. So that was fun. So you know, here I was, I had like my picture posted across like all the emails saying, hey, don't let Avi into your class because he's not paying for them. <laughs> so I, I was wholesaling at the time. Well, there, I was doing three different things. Um, one, I was buying and selling classic cars on eBay. So I'd find them on Craigslist and then I would sell them on eBay to like people in Australia and wherever. So I was generating cash that way. I was wholesaling real estate and I was buying and selling notes, or at least like kind of getting in the middle of that transaction on the secondary market. So finding first lien holders, second lien holders, and then selling that to say, you know, a fund somewhere in Wisconsin. So these three things kind of helped me build a little bit of cash. And I realized one thing, I'm like, I need to surround myself with people. Now at the time, I didn't really know if what what a good mentor was versus a bad mentor. So at the time, I surrounded myself with just any mentor, and he taught me how to look at property, but not in the right way. Like I, I ended up buying property in the worst area of of Detroit. It was like super inner city. I'm like, what's going on? I have no idea. And I remember a finishing class. It was like it was snowing in Ann Arbor. I finished like at 7, 7.30. I get a call from my contractor. He's like, Abby, you need to get down to your property. It's in Detroit. I'm like, all right, cool, go. Finish classes, get out there. And on my way there, he's like, he shot me a text. He's like, hey man, I've left the shop back for you. Just, you have to take care of this. I gotta go pick up my kids. I get to the property. I open the front door. I hear running water, go to the basement, I'm neck deep in water, and I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> like, that was my big, oh, crap moment. And most people would have been scared. I was scared. Like, I was so scared. I was alone. Mom and dad didn't know that I was investing in real estate. They thought I was some, you know, good kid going to engineering classes. They had no idea I had a car and, like, all this stuff. Well, now you know, Mom and Dad. Um, <laughs> and, like... I was so scared. Was this your first? Was this started. your first investment that that happened on, or were you at least a couple houses in by this point? No, that was my first, and I, I didn't even have. I didn't have one, Jamie. I had three of these. Uh -huh. And so, and how that, did how did they started. turn out? Did uh, you put the sump pump in the basement and and pumped out all the water, yeah. and it, it, you were able to flip it and make some money, or what became of that one? So I did the best that I could. I was able to drain the water out, but. I didn't make any money on it. I wholesaled it to another flipper who somehow saw value in that, that, that I didn't. And I just, I walked away with 
I, I would say barely any scabs. I think I lost maybe a thousand or two per property. Well, that's not bad for your first deal. At least you learned. I mean, I've heard, uh, I've seen many investors yep. lose their uh, rear end on some uh, some investments. Yeah, no, that's that's fair. That is fair. I I barely came away. That's for sure. And so you began investing then in the Detroit market. I mean, we've heard nothing but bad things about the uh, the real estate in Detroit. Did, were you able to make Detroit real estate work? You know, I haven't been back since. So that was 2006. Well, I'm sorry. No, that was 2003, 2004. I graduated in 2006. I moved out of Ann Arbor, went to Nebraska, the Missouri. I just haven't been back to Detroit. But from what I hear right now, Detroit is absolutely on fire. Really? It is absolutely on fire. Well, yeah. they're, they're like, shrinking the city, so they're they're getting rid of the, the supply problem, and so eventually supply and demand are going to meet. I mean, I've heard for years, and I've never been there, but, you know, the, the outer suburbs are, you know, condensing in now, so obviously that'll eventually fix that problem, so I could see that happening. Yeah, I think it's going to take a little bit of time. You know, they had some political issues and this and that and the other. They had to, I think, reduce the size of the city because the because the cops couldn't take care of, like, all of Detroit. But I think, you know, give it 10 years. I mean, I think Detroit's on the rebound. I'd even read an article a couple years ago uh, that some of the homes in the outer areas, they didn't want to tear them down because they were new, but they were putting some type of big rolls of shrink wrap around them to, to kind of preserve them. I don't know how much truth or how prevalent that ever became, but I even read articles about that. Just very interesting, though, what, what has happened in Detroit from its, you know, expansion to now it's, it's a retraction due to, you know, the auto industry. Yeah, that's a really good way to wrap a house. <laughs> yes, I don't know. I always saw that one time, and I've asked that of a few people, and nobody's ever validated it. So I don't know. Maybe I was reading one of those fake news articles. But this was before fake news became popular. This was about seven or eight years ago. So I'm assuming it was a legitimate news story. But nonetheless, today you're based out of Atlanta. You're the host of the Real Estate Deal Talk podcast and radio show. Tell me about your operation as it exists today. Yep, you got it. I have one business partner, and we do our best to keep it lean and mean. You know, we we go through the, he and I go through an exercise once a year, and it might sound a little morbid, but we write our eulogy, and it helps to really refocus our efforts on what is it that we're doing, why is it that we're doing it, which is the most important piece, why, and what kind of lifestyle do we want? You now, when I first got into the real estate business. I called it a real estate business, but there are not a lot of folks that treat it and create a business. They create a job. You know, I don't want to be the guy that's known for building my life around my business. I want to build my business around my life. Right. And to, to answer your question, I have one business partner. He is 10 years, almost exactly 10 years older than me. So he's like the older, wiser one. I'm, I'm like the kid off the block to him. He's, he's like, yeah, you know, Avi, all you want to do is just go buy and buy and buy and buy. I'm like, yeah, because that's what I do. I'm 32. <laughs> it makes sense. I right. just want to buy everything. And he provides that cool, calmer, more mature kind of vision. And I really like that. So it's a really good balance. I mean, he and I are, are yin and yang. We do a lot of residential development, new construction, if we find the opportunities to do new construction. Uh, we prefer development, so we prefer uh, taking raw land, uh, working with the city to have it rezoned, to get the permits in place, and then eventually sell the builders. That's phase one. Uh, with any profit, and with the profit that we see from that phase, we do one of two things, Jamie. We'll buy single-family rentals, and we'll buy multifamily apartment complexes. That's what we do. So it's moving money from our from the uh, from the development and new construction uh, phase or piece to this other bucket that we uh, call our long term hold bucket. Well, that's good that you have somebody in your business that kind of puts the brakes, you know, on uh, your your buying spree because I know it's easy to get excited in real estate. It's and, and we're all, you know, so much you know want to give people what they want, and so it's very easy to overpay in real estate. So so that's good that you've got somebody who's able to put the brakes on uh, your your buying operation. I mean, I see you know a lot of investors who make that mistake early on and you know make a mistake or two. I mean, it puts you right out of the business. Real estate's not something that you know is very forgiving, you know, in the beginning until you can build up those reserves. I agree. I, it's, real estate is not one of those things that mimics TV, right? It's not one of those things where it's like, yeah, we're going to select 
one house out of the three choices because that's what they do on TV, mm -hmm. right? They don't, they don't give you the 100 choices. They don't show you that, hey, these people are actually looking at 100 properties. Right. They're, they're looking at... Um, they're looking at three homes out of the three homes. They're looking at, they'll pick one and then, Hey, we're going to rehab it. It's going to take 10 minutes. And then after the commercial, it's sold. Right. Like, this is a completely skewed version of reality. Right. No, I know about that. I've uh, sold, uh, sold plenty of homes myself, done a little bit of an investing, but, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, they don't talk about all the, uh, unforeseen that come up in a traditional, uh, a real estate uh, purchase, especially when you get into some of the older homes, there's all kinds of unforeseen stuff that pops up. That's right. And there's so many things that can pop up in older homes. You know, it's, you don't know what's, what's behind those walls. You don't know if that foundation is super, super tight the way that it needs to be. So completely agree with that. So in Atlanta, how is the uh, real estate uh, market doing right now? In Tampa, we're very undersupplied, uh, values rising, but they're not jumping, but they're rising. How's Atlanta doing right now? Yeah, we're jumping. <laughs> we're jumping way too much. You have like all those jumping beans or magic beans or whatever. Um, they are, Atlanta's super on fire, and that's a very big concern for me. Um, I'm sure we'll get to that in a few minutes as well, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things where if you don't buy right, then you can really be underwater really quickly, and if you buy into the hype, um, it's very, very, very dangerous. Yeah, we'll right talk now. a little Maybe bit more about that. Is dangerous. When we come back from the yeah, break, absolutely. my guest, Abi Gohar, host of the Real Estate Deal Talk podcast and radio show based in Atlanta, also an accomplished real estate investor. Learn more, realestatedealtalk.com. He also has a, a link to uh, ask some real estate investing questions. So if you have any questions, go to his site again, ask him some questions, realestatedealtalk.com. You're listening to the all-new That Business Show 2.0 with your host, Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Hi, welcome to Yeagers. We just want to take a minute and show you what we're all about. Uh, at Yeagers, our primary business is hardwood flooring, although we are remodelers for kitchen, bath, and general construction. We operate a fleet of shop-at-home vans that have all the flooring-type products, hardwood flooring, laminate flooring, tile, stone, what have you. So we're able to come out first with products in our vehicles and take a look at the setting, how the colors will work, and then to be able to come up with some options and ideas for you. If that's not good enough, we have a large distribution center that we inventory product and have a nice display area.
And welcome back to That Business Show 2.0, where business becomes show business. My guest today, Abby Golhar, host of the Real Estate Deal podcast and radio show. And we're sharing a great discussion on real estate investing. So, Abby, we're talking a little bit about what's going on in Atlanta right now. Markets starting to jump. I mean, is this, and I know in Tampa in 2004, 2005, we got into that, that hyper market mode where values were jumping month over month and it really wasn't sustainable. Uh, right now, we're seeing a much more conservative rise in values, but what in Atlanta, are you seeing like a hypermarket type of scenario? Yeah, it depends on the neighborhood, Jamie. I think if you look at like Kirkwood, East Atlanta, East Atlanta Village, uh, there are certain pockets that are just jumping like crazy month after month, increase in valuation. And you can't, I'll give you an example. There's, I, I referenced Kirkwood. A year ago, we could have purchased individual lots like just just tear down opportunities essentially purchasing the dirt we could have bought it at maybe roughly 120 to 130. today right now you can't get into a new construction deal for less than two hundred and ten thousand dollars wow it is obnoxious so the big challenge with that is well where's the market headed well i think in atlanta specifically we have a couple of i think we have a couple of things that will delay uh, the eventual plateau, namely uh, the NCAA, um, what is that? The, the, there's something, I'm not really a sports guy unless it's Michigan football, the playoffs right. in 2018. And then we have the NFL, um, the, uh, the Super Bowl in 2019. And my expectation is things should cool off maybe the quarter after the Super Bowl. But you just have to pay attention to these local markets to see what's hot and what's not. Atlanta's way too hot. I'm looking at buy and hold opportunities outside of Atlanta, maybe about 30, 45 minutes of a drive, because why would I pay, you know, $250,000, $260,000 for a property that I'm going to have to Airbnb and not necessarily cash flow on from a normal renter? Why do you think values are jumping? Is it because money is getting easier to access again? Is it a, a demand issue where people are coming into Atlanta in great numbers? Uh, you know, in, in Florida, we've always got the, you know, the, the older population that's moving into the area. And we can always justify, you know, the, the increases due to, you know, the population increase. But, you know, the easier money or money gets to, uh, to get, you know, the values begin to jump too. Are you, do you think it's because of that? I think that's because of that. I mean, we're definitely seeing some pretty good job growth. There are a lot of folks, about a million new people that are moving to Atlanta over the next five to seven years. Um, I'm sure you've read some of the uh, more recent kind of like what's happening in the news. Over the last year, the first quarter of 2016 to the first quarter of 2017, the FICO scores have jumped nearly for the majority of homeowners uh, or just the majority of people by between seven to 10 points. The reason for this is because FICO is looking at credit differently, you know, every specifically student debt. And from what I understand, because most folks have student debt, the impact that student debt will have on credit is decreased by a little bit. More importantly, now you have Fannie loosening its DTI requirements. And so that, gives for a well if money's more available we're going to have we're going to have supply problems because everybody wants to buy and right now it was maybe the end of june where housing wire put out an article saying that homeowners have to move at lightning speed to purchase property this is very indicative for me of, of, of the environment that was created in 2008. Uh, Fannie just backed Invitation Homes to the tune of a billion dollars. Um, Goldman Sachs just funded a billion dollars to their, I think, credit partner something fund. This was at the end of June. It's a very interesting market right now. Atlanta's hot. A lot of the primary markets are hot. So I recommend taking a look at secondary markets, uh, maybe within 30, 45 minutes to an hour drive of primary markets for, for single family buy and hold rental opportunities. Yeah, I'm the, I'm in the same boat down here in, in Hillsborough County, which is where uh, Tampa, Florida is. And then if you go north into Pasco, uh, you get into a lot more opportunity up there. It's also where the city is pushing towards in the next 20 years, Tampa Bay will pretty much take over probably uh, Pasco. County, but you know, taxes are lower up there, insurance is lower up there. You can get a much better property up there than what you can down here in Tampa. Also, our market down here in Tampa has been turned into a rental community by those groups that you just mentioned, such as Invitation Homes and Progress Residential yep. uh, and, and a, a number of those Blackstone, those types of groups. And so that's part of the problem that we're having here with inventory is in 2012, they sucked up so much of that inventory and turned it into rental housing that it's difficult for the average homeowner to 
find a home these days. And I think that was similar in Atlanta, too. You had a lot of those groups in Atlanta, too, correct? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's, you know, you look at some of the some of the zip codes that were riddled with mortgage fraud back in 2007, 2008, right? 30310, 15, 17, and that's what, if you and I had like a billion dollars in 2009, <laughs> I would totally buy an, on all of these neighborhoods, Jamie. Mm -hmm. Like, you and I would create a fund and we would just be rock stars right now. Yeah. Not that we're not rock stars right now, but I mean, you're a rock star. I'm just, <laughs> I'm pretending to be one. I think if we had a billion dollars, that's what I would do. I would buy it. But that's what these funds did. Yeah, that and more and more of them did. come on to the, uh, in the market every day. And, and I also get the ones who are trying to do what the others have done. I get contacted all the time by investors who are trying to mimic those models. And they, they do a terrible job. They usually you know, make a few mistakes and they're gone. But the ones who do it best, and there are many of them, they've, they've really uh, you know, capitalized in real estate. Uh, and uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, a billion dollars goes a long way. Yep, that's right. And right now you have to get creative, creative in finding deals. You know, everybody's looking at the MLS. And it's not just the individual investors like you and I, but it is, it, there are these funds that have access to tech. I mean, they can tear down uh, MLS sheets, they can punch everything into their system, and within minutes they have, you know, thousands of properties analyzed. Do you think you're going to beat these guys at, at finding a deal? Absolutely not. Yeah, I recently so worked with... I was recently working with one investment group where they actually sent me the leads. They were pulling the leads based on their criteria from my MLS and saying, this meets our initial criteria, finish the, anal uh, the analysis of the property for us. But yeah, you're right. They're building models that are trumping with the, the job of the real estate agent. Yep, that's right. I mean, and it's, it's crazy. Uh, and then Zillow has the instant offers, which they said they're not going to become a brokerage, but you know, they're real estate agents that feel threatened because of that. And, you know, we have, to, we have to change the way that we think about this stuff and be pro-investor, get into the investor's mindset, buy right, get creative, because that's the environment that we're in. But you're and right. We correct you know, in the next... With access to, uh, to the multiple listing oh, service, yeah, that's the last place uh, uh, the typical real estate investor wants to look uh, these days. I know down here in Tampa, uh, a lot of the investors I know, they're making all their money right now at the auction. Uh, years ago, people were, you know, uh, you know, still, you know, able to get deals off of, you know, wholesalers and 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 multiple listing service. But right now, all the action is down at the uh, at the courthouse. Uh, not sure how it works necessarily in Georgia and in Atlanta, but do you see that same type of uh, opportunity there in Atlanta? Stop telling everybody the secret, man. <laughs> hey, just because they you, know the source doesn't mean they know how to do it, though. I, I, people can lose their butt if they don't know how to buy at the courthouse. Though. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I agree. I like the courthouse meme. Yeah, I like the courthouse. What I, I also do like probate. You know, I like going down to the uh, to the courthouse, picking apart um, probate records, sending them a mailer, getting really involved in what's going on, and then striking a deal and saying, hey, how can I solve a problem? How can I be of service to you? And let me buy your property. Right, right. You know, that's, plenty of these are two... Yeah, I was going to say, there's plenty of different type of off-market deals, seller financing deals. I've, I've covered that, uh, different types of real estate investing strategies a number of times on this program. But you're right. You've got to get creative these days. If you're saying, I'm going to start investing in real estate and your, your strategy is just to look for the lowest price property in the multiple listing service, that's, that's really not going to keep you <laughs> sustained in, in investing. Yeah, it's, it's not. That is a very short-sighted strategy. And because everybody else is doing it and you'll get frustrated really fast. I mean, you got to get creative, start reaching out to local people, attend a couple of local meetup, meetup groups, listen to this show, um, get in touch with Jamie. I mean, and you'll do, you'll, you'll find what's been working for people. We just dropped, I mean, Jamie just dropped a gold nugget, which is these auctions. I mean, go to the auctions that are not the most popular and you'll win. Yeah, Take a look at probate records. You'll win. And in our community in Tampa Bay, Hillsborough County, they've made it easier for people to go to the auction. Now it's it's online. Up until a couple of years ago, you had to physically go downtown to the, uh, the courthouse and, and bid, but not anymore. You can be sitting in your house in California and bid on property in Tampa. It's frustrated a lot of the local investors, uh, but uh, yeah, so it doesn't matter where you're at. You can bid on Tampa Bay real estate from the comfort of your home. Yep. I, I love it. We can in Atlanta, I wish. I wish we could. That'd be great. You start to go to the courthouse in Atlanta? 
Yeah, we have to go to the courthouse in Atlanta, that's for sure. It's only a matter of time, though. Everything's moving online, and eventually it'll be, it'll be online. Eventually every auction will be online down the road. It just, uh, just depends on how, far, how long the, uh, the, the local investors can lobby to keep it off uh, the online uh, uh, platform. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, 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 I love tech. You know, I love tech for the real estate space. Real estate's a little bit behind, but that, there's crazy amount of opportunity right now. Like these virtual reality headsets, for walkthroughs of property, that will change the game in the future, I promise you. Oh yeah, I'm already starting to see uh, signs up, uh, you know, for virtual showings. Call this number and we'll allow you access to the home and you can even walk through the home without uh, without a real estate agent. You know, they wire the home with cameras and they, they watch you remotely. So yeah, the, 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 the job of the real estate agent is, is quickly changing due to technology. Yep, and that's why real estate agents now more than ever need to be investing in property. I mean, why? Y'all have all the tools. I mean, y'all have all the tools more so than uh, like me, the regular investor that's not an agent. It's it's all it comes down to mindset. It's all it is. You just get so used to doing something a certain way that any change, uh, you know, upsets uh, your routine. But you're right. You're right. You uh, real estate agents definitely need to be investing more. No, you got it, man. I mean, I'm I'm super excited about the future. I think that. If we look for the right opportunity and we analyze the right opportunity, it will absolutely be there. Let's not be, let's not get too excited in a really hot market because that's where that's where lemmings go to die. Right. But more importantly, let's be cautious. Let's find the right opportunity that makes sense for us, and let's not spend fifty thousand dollars on a boot camp, fur bus weekend drive through of Atlanta. Uh, to learn how to invest in real estate. It's super easy to get involved locally, find some good mentors, and get it done. Abhi Gohar, host of the Real Estate Deal podcast and radio show based in Atlanta. Thank you so much for being on the program with me today. Hey, thanks for having me, Jamie. Absolutely. And learn more about him, realestatedealtalk.com. You can also ask him questions on his website as well. So follow up with him at realestatedealtalk.com. New episodes again each weekday morning, 9 a.m. on thatbusinessnetwork.com and find us on iTunes and on YouTube. So again, you've been listening to the all-new That Business Show 2.0 with your host, Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business.